Welcome to Quack Talk. I'm Crystal here again, still in Hong Kong and pursuing continuing um, important boundary pushing topics that involve Asia and maybe in context to the world. Now, this month, as you all know, is the, or you may not know and you should know, is the Trans Visibility Day of, uh, right? International Trans Visibility Day or month. And so we're going to talk about trans visibility in Hong Kong. I've got a special guest with me today who is a trans man in Hong Kong who um, who founded a, an organization to create the support systems um, and to talk about it. And, and we're here to talk about what the stigmas are and how we struggle to find space to, to have communities to talk about these um, issues that are still very, very sensitive here in Hong Kong. So uh, without further ado, let me introduce my wonderful guest, Casper Wuna. And Casper, welcome to Quok Talk. Hi. Crystal, yeah, how are you? Great. Thank you for being on our show. Um, so, you know, it's very, I'm very lucky to have you to uh, be on the show because you come from a very local perspective. You share your own personal experience. You've had videos, films, you've, you've filmed yourself um, doing transition operation, talking to your mother in very intimate settings about your identity and, and, I find it entertaining almost, if you don't mind, is your conversation with your mom because it um, is very real and to see how she feels about your process and how you try to get her to understand it is really, really important. So why don't you start by um, sharing a little bit about your background? Like, you know, how did you grow up and how did you come to see your identity first? Oh, okay. Um, so I think like I have some like typical um, like beats as like a uh, most binary transgender people and some like uh, unusual uh, experience. Um, the typical thing is that like I, I do have a sense um, of like uh, that I'm not girl uh, or of, like I don't feel like a girl or I feel like that I want to be a boy. Um, that's how I express it when I was young. How like, old, when you say young, how old were you? Three or as long as like I remembers. Okay. But this this part is kind of very typical. Um, okay. And um, but the um un 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 untypical part is that like uh, I have a very I think um, relatively happy um like growing up um times that like uh, I could be like as tomboy as much as I I would like myself to be um present myself as a tomboy um I have a an elder brother a younger sister. Um, and I could just pray with them, pray with my brother and like, um, have the, um, clothes that's like the, the old clothes of my brother, etc. And, um, and no one really questioned about how boyish or masculine that I am. Um, I mean, or, or somehow they would acknowledge it. They say, well, you're so boyish or you're so masculine. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of like, um. I would say affirming or comforting to me when I was young. I don't Did realize you that like uh, your siblings felt that way because they didn't think of it to the extent that you don't want you are not comfortable in the body you grew up in, or they thought it was like harmless play, like just you know I'm just um, dressing up. Yeah, well, that that's the part the part that we say uh like gender identity and gender expression, right? Gender identity is how you think like what gender you are, whether it's binary, man or woman or non-binary, and and that's the gender expression part, whether it's about your like appearance and also your interest, that kind of like whether it's being defined as like more masculine or feminine part. Um, I think that my gender expression is quite um in terms of my interest and also my appearance is quite like masculine or boyish. Um, and, and, um, I think to my, to my like siblings or others, families, they just take it as part of my character. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and to me, um, I didn't have like, oh, and also you, you asked about the body. Well, I, I don't have like very much uncomfortable, um, ness towards my body until puberty. Mm -hmm. right. And that's kind of like common. Um, for like the experience for trans men, uh, cause like for trans women, they, they know it or they, they, or not, they know it, 
but they have this kind of uncomfortableness with their body since they were very young because of like the bottom part, right? The genitals. Okay. Yeah. But for transplant, it's more about the upper part um, and it comes with puberty. So it's only about when puberty hits, then that I feel more uncomfortable about my body. Um, but um, I would say that like fortunately my my breast like my or my top part uh, was not that big and so I could like cover with my like clothes yeah. layers of clothes or just like through my bag and I feel more comfortable about it and at that time um, it's I, I don't think it's like only me who don't feel comfortable about my body change okay like other girls they, they have the same kind of like similar kind of feelings that they don't know what to do about. Yeah, like, because your body is changing. You have, you know. Right, right, right. So I, I could not distinguish whether it's about like anything about related to my gender or generality or it's about like the body change. Right. Like, right, what's the difference between my feelings and those of other girls, right? Right. And so, um, but the difference is that like the this kind of uncomfortableness persists, right? Um, and... I was quite late um, to realize that I'm a trans. Um, I only realized that I'm a trans when I was 32. Oh, wow. When I read, yeah, yeah. When I read a book of a trans. Wait, how old are you now? You don't even look 32. <laughs> Chinese, but, Chinese uh, youth. Right. Um, I'm 45 now. Okay. So okay. it's about like um, 13 years ago that I realized I'm a trans when I read a book of like a, a bibliography of a Japanese trans woman. Um, that she talks about her like childhood and like what she think, how she feel, and um, that I find similarities, mm. and so I realized that I'm the same kind of like person as her. Just that also, with our gender. Is different. Do you think also because there was no terminology, no vocabulary for what it meant, you know, like 10, 20 years ago? So you didn't know yeah. what it was you were feeling. You just knew you weren't some you weren't in the right body is that the way to put it i mean that definitely definitely okay. um when i like when i'm like uh, um like in, in contact with other trans people like uh, from my organization and and during my journey um that like i i really find the generation difference right um that like people who's like about the generation as as me or like they're older um, because there's a lack of like uh, information um yeah. like the internet was not really like there yet and so it's very difficult for them to 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 work out like what what they are, who they are, right? Um, what kind of like uh, struggles that they are going through, um, and for the younger generations like the um twenties, uh, thirties, like early thirties, or even like teenage underage people, um, trans people, they 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 could really find the um, um the like information about their struggles, about yeah. their experience on internet, and then they 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 know. Who they are, and they also could like, uh, like um, use the the um, the narrations of other people, right? Other trans people to to tell their stories, okay? Um, to 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 yeah, well, and I'm like for us, we just, yeah. sorry, um, because you're talking about the young, younger generation having access to information, which helps them uh, use that vocabulary, but all at the same time. There's a lot of criticism from more conservative, uh, especially older generation, who think that there's a trend, that we're not really understanding what gender is, that they're making these big mistakes by, you know, pushing themselves, thinking that they identify with something, and then they have this operation, and then they're like, um, oh, gosh, you know, this is going to be like tragic consequences. Um, so while we're still moving ahead with... Um, a progressive way of thinking about the different types of genders and bodies, the older generation are still stuck in a way of not understanding or not wanting to understand. So how do we talk about the intergenerational conversation? You know, your mom is very liberal compared to a lot of Chinese moms, right? So you were lucky. But how do we bridge these conversations? And how do you what how do you feel about the young people who feel like, oh, what well, is it a trend? Like why is everybody wanting to do an operation now? Everyone's claiming they're trans or bi. What you know? Well, I mean, like not not every trans do do like do what operations, right? Right. And um and, and also that would lead to another like uh, issue or about like gender recognition. So gender recognition be tied to operation, right? Because yeah. like currently in Hong Kong um, the, the way for a person, okay, whether they're trans or not, okay, but for a trans person, right, 
Um, the way that they could change the agenda of the ID card, Hong Kong ID card, is that they have to um, undergo um, surgery, which okay. means like a uh, removal of their reproductive organs and also transform their genitals. Okay. And um, otherwise, they could not change the gender. So, like, for me, uh, my decision on, like, or on surgery is about that. Like, I, I want to, I, I did my top surgery, okay? Removal of my breast, okay? Because I don't feel comfortable with, about that. Um, but I didn't not do... Not because of like, the ID. Surgery. You didn't do that because of the uh, identity uh, for the entity. No, it's I not about the Hong Kong ID card. It's about, like, really about how... I feel my above my body. Right. Okay. So I didn't do the bottom surgery. And so I could not change the gender of my Hong Kong ID card. And it still stays like me as like F. Okay. Um, even though I do look like masculine after and, and more masculine after my use of like um testosterone. Okay. My voice like changes, I grow through the um boys' puberty, um, I become more muscular, etc. And so, like, uh, it's quite inconvenient that I I'm I, I have to explain to others like why. Like what? Like I'm a trans person, and they may not understand what that means, yeah. um, and what my what my needs would be. Yeah. Um. And and um, and and also like um, there's like quite a lot of like perception about like trans people is like tied to like surgery, okay? And also maybe bathrooms, right? And also yeah. maybe there's like there's so uh like assault or some that kind of things or fans, right? Um, and I think huh? like, do you think are people Complaining, uh, I, not not just in Hong Kong, even in U.S. You know, U.S. Like, particularly, US. everyone's trying to make noise about that. Oh, you know, it's you know the danger, but I didn't see that in Hong Kong. I don't see that kind of um, vulnerability in that sense in the bathrooms. But maybe well, it's not just that. Like it's just that. Like it's not that like outspoken in a sense. I mean, yeah. um, some people they are they're just like they want to know more. Um, they're not taking stance yet. Okay. And some people, if they are, they're like opposite. Um, like um, I mean, even say the um, the the uh, religious people, the Christians. Oh. I mean, they are more against same sex, right? Same sex like relationships or same sex marriage. But uh, regarding transgender, I mean, they may say that well, it's not natural. Or God didn't create you, create you like this. Yeah. Um, but. Because like Bible didn't mention anything about like trust people is not there, <laughs> and so I, I think like it's more difficult relatively uh, for them to really like say something very definite, okay, to oppose us, um, and especially like say we sort of have like a backup of like having a diagnosis, like a psychiatric or mental like condition or for having like gender yeah. dysphoria, right? So that's kind of like maybe regarding as us as having a some kind of like illness or like sickness yeah. that like is out of our control that like we didn't choose it so i think like whether people are opposite like to a something or not depends on whether they think it's like a, a your choice or not yeah. so for same sex like people like the gay and lesbians the christians may think that well it's your choice right mm -hmm. and so they would oppose it right you shouldn't choose this okay um and for like trans people they're missing, they, they, they could not say much about it because like we have like sort of like a medical or like science, like not back up that like we didn't choose how the way that we, we are. Hmm. Um, you know, it, and so it, it, that's like the interesting conversation as well. Can we back up a little bit and talk about like the context right. to how this came to be? Because, you know, you and I had this previous conversation that, you know, um, in other parts of the world, there are indigenous cultures where in third genders, non-binary genders have always been there. You know, India, you know, in, in the Pacific Islands, Hawaii, they have had um, identities that have been respected for forever um, until the religion kind of came down and says, or colonial yeah, yeah. came down and says, no, this is very black and white. We have men and women. You are not, doesn't fit into our structure. So in Hong Kong, Chinese culture, we had the, uh, obviously, you, the Unix was part of a, uh, the system of the king, you know, the, the, the emperor, but there have been trans trans people, right? Non-binary people forever. So how does the Chinese culture take on this conversation today? Well, I would say that, like, um, <clears throat> I don't think there's, like, any, like, standalone non-binary icons um, that's in the Chinese culture. But there's, like, um, this kind of, like, understanding or concept about 
like transcending gender. I mean, in the sense that, like, say in Chinese opera, right? Yeah, I think um, there's only 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 men there, like, to to perform, right? Right. They have to like pretend or they have to dress up as a female, right? right? But that's that, very right? accepted and respected, right? So it's like, but then that's a performance, so they don't think, oh, yeah. Then, Right, but but also like say in like the Munat, Mun Munat, yeah. Munat, you know the yeah, the yeah. great theme, right? That that's like a daughter, like who like a pre or a dress up to be a, a son to take the um uh, responsibility for for the father and for the brothers, right? Right. So this kind of like transcending gender is is there. This kind of understanding and has sort of like been respect or like in understand in that context, right? It's like Chinese opera or it's like the for the uh, video PRT or, or that kind of things. Yeah. So um, I think that's like this kind of like space, I would say space, right? For for understanding of like the transforming gender in the in this sense. Mm -hmm. um, but then only it, when it comes to like say, um, say the past like maybe 40 years, um, say in Hong Kong, we do have like um, gender affirming surgery, um, which is like was previously known as like um, sex reassignment surgery. Yes. Um, uh, back in the early eighties, right, like forty years ago, years ago, I think we are one of like the most like um, uh, we really keep up with the, like what's been outside. I mean, in in other foreign countries, um, that like we have this this kind of like medical um system being provided by the uh, public hospital, you know, the government hospital. Oh, okay. that um, so, all right, yeah, from psychiatric assessment um to like um prescribing hormones to like um get um grant you surgery that is like being supported by the government hospital I think and so yeah yeah and so I, I think like and then you can change your ge gender id yeah right because they gender. need that right they not the official yeah. kind of confirmation yeah yeah so so this kind of like a formal backup was there since yeah. like 40 years ago um, and, and that's like the uh, public affairs, like um, a program, TV program um, has been featuring about like this, um, this group of like, say, transsexual people before, mm -hmm. like transgender people. Yeah. Um, and, and so like, uh, and, but, but the term in Chinese was like um, being used was like sex change before being saying, you okay, right. but now we really use transgender crossing, uh, like for right. this group of people, right? And um, cause they and, crossed and, over, right? To like, right? The transition. I think like. It's like when we say tra transgender, it's more about like transcend or instead of like sex change. Yeah. Um. And and really, we we want to like um emphasize nowadays is that like we are like somehow uh inco incongruence, right? That's a term of another diagnosis is gender. Apart from gender dysphoria, it's gender incongruence in the uh, ICD menu. Okay. Okay. And so it's we have this kind of like in, um gender incongruence, and I we want to be congruent again. Okay, so this is the, the 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 message that we convey to others. Okay, instead of like change, we are not changing. We are like just like being ourselves, right? Changing the outer body to align with our inner self. Okay, it's this kind of like um I uh, understanding. Are you happy um, with the way the government is progressing or moving in the direction to to support people in the trans community here? Well, yes, I think like um. Compared to other, especially compared to other countries, um, I think like medical support is really important for um, trans people who really have like a severe um, like degree of like towards their body, body dysphoria, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's like um, they either do self harm or yeah. kill themselves, or they would like have to save up a lot of money to go overseas to do it. Right. Um, the system is not there. I mean, the, the support from the government is not there. But then um, when there's like um, support from the government hospital, then it's really like safe a lot. And it's like a lowered assess, right? Uh, people who are with different background, like different economic background, they could like, have access to the, this kind of like medical support. But do you have to and be, also, um, sorry, just the, the, the ability to have these operations, do you need like a regular doctor to recommend, like they have to be diagnosed before they are allowed to have these um, surgeries or it can- Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, uh, I think like uh, not like a referral from, like from maybe say doctor. a GP and yeah. then and then the, to see the psychiatrist. Uh -huh. That's like a, uh, they have like a gender identity clinic, a centralized clinic, uh -huh. um, like providing um, support from like psychiatrists to um, clinical psychologists 
to endocrinologists who prescribe hormones, right. uh, the other like surgeons, you know, like your one stop. Like, yeah, so, but you, there are, you need to have all these support systems in order yeah. to get to that. And then when it gets to the operation, because it's government run, then it's affordable for people who need to do it. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just that like um, nowadays it's like a, a long queue, like oh, really? because of limited resources. There. Yeah. Like say for trans woman to do the bottom surgery is about, the wait is about 10 years. What? Or more. Yeah. Why? Is there like, only like two doctors who can do it? What? Well, only one. And and they oh, only no. like they only um provide say six um do six cases per year. So when you hear that like ten years is a long time, but it's only about like sixty cases, right? And of course you can understand that like that's a long wait. Yeah. And so like for some people they would um do the surgery overseas. Okay. But still, apart from the surgery, you can still get the support like the psychiatric assessment yeah. and other support yeah. from the government yeah. hospital, and that's important. I think that's and very important. I think the mental aspect really is important. so under uh, acknowledged, right? That's right. You that's right. It. You don't see that problem. Yeah, and also the 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 legal recognition part. I mean, the Hong Kong is there. I mean, compared to some countries, say like even for Thailand or Philippines, um, they could never ever change their gender. Even they have surgery. All right. Okay. So yeah. yeah, yeah. So the the system is just not there. Yeah, the recognition yeah. is not there. Right. Um, in Hong Kong, it's at least there, right? Yeah. And um, and there's see like people a from like China coming over to do it, or other places to come to Hong Kong to do the surgery. Oh no, 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 not 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 really. Um, right. so I, I think that like kind of would... medical tourism for that. No, uh, yeah. Hong Kong. I mean, I think like the trans community uh, in Asia, they would prefer to go to Thailand. Yeah, still. Yeah. Okay. All cases. And I've heard like from Japan, from Hong Kong, from yeah. other yeah. places. Yeah. Let's go back because I don't, I know we're going to run out of time right. before we know it. But um, talk about your personal transition process. Like um, for people who don't know and understand, like, um, you you know, we mentioned mental, um, the, the, the challenges of, of, of accepting your body and maybe the physical. So you... Um, when you start hormones, like how long was that process? How, when, to what point did you feel like, okay, well, I've achieved this point where I really feel comfortable. I am what I Oh, okay. So, um, I think about half a year uh, of the use of testosterone, uh, my voice like dropped and stabled and my period stops okay. uh, a bit or a bit more than half a year. Okay. So, um, it really helps me to uh, feel more like in my body, okay, mm -hmm. how I present myself. Mm -hmm. um, and before my voice dropped, I really like fear to speak in a sense or very get very nervous or anxious. Um, and then my uh, my body, like the fat and the mus muscle become like um, transform the part. Really? And it's easier for me to do gym and gain muscles. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, my outlook become more like muscular. Angular. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and I... I don't look at myself in mirror before that much, huh. really. Yeah, true. Um, and then I, I like to when I, I, I got some facial hair as well. Yeah. So when I, time when I look into the mirror, I, I feel that like that's me, and it's become more um aligned to like how I would imagine myself would would be like right. with my self image, and that's yeah. very important to say. Um, and so when I'm more at ease with myself and my body, yes, um, I become more confident, yeah. just more, like casual in like interacting with other people. Um, and, and I, I'm, and also, as I said, I'm very fortunate to have all my friends, my family who accept me Yeah, and I just like them as my support at the mm -hmm. back and I can really go, um, quite far Yeah, and I want to like, uh, that's how I want to like, um, um, set up another organization, set up an organization to like support other um, trans people. Yeah, I think that. Uh, it, apart from providing like peer support, I have another like trans woman colleague work with me as well. Um, apart from providing um, peer support, um, we will also engage um, professionals like the speech therapist, um, counselor uh, to provide counseling to have monthly support groups. Um, speech for, uh, therapists, why, why speech therapist? Right. Um, they, they are like, say, they help access, especially for trans women to learn to speak in a feminine voice oh, wow. because their voice could not, would not change um, after yeah. their use of like uh, hormones. Right. So, and that's very important for them. Um, 
Because, like, as I said, yeah, yeah. If even if they are their like their appearance is more like feminine, right? They are, they still fear to speak because that would just break their image as a. See, as that's a woman. not an, uh, an aspect that people might think as part of the process. And when you say that transition process, and you say you, I like the word transcend because you're going beyond something. It's not just um, a change. You know, you're 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 taking yourself and you're you're uh, shaping it and and thinking about specific ways to help shape it to what you want it to be, right? Yeah, I think like yes, yes. Um, I, I, what like back to your like question very early about like the the like older generation or how yeah, many people think. Yeah. About sex and gender and yep. about um, surgery etc i think like um as a trans person really we really apart from like supporting the peers we also do proper education as well yeah and what we do is like try to break down all the layers or the aspects related to gender um and what sex means what body um and what gender how you perceive your self-image and or what kind of like uh, the spectrum um, as a woman, you can be like uh, you can be very feminine and also be more like a boyish that kind of thing uh -huh. for men as well, mm -hmm. and and also like there's some in between, uh, like say especially for non-binary persons, yeah. they don't want to be put into either of the um, binary boxes, right? Um, and um, and talk about like um, um, even as like um physical body, yeah, we've heard that like trans men in like uh, some other countries they got pregnant, right, right. and they have kids. Right, yeah, they have exactly. period, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and and even there's a lot of like criticism on on them. Yeah. Um, how they are just like a not really man or woman or right. the kind or like choosing, um, that kind of things. I think like it's more about like body autonomy. Mm -hmm. uh, and also how you like, uh, find peace with your body. Yeah, I like that. I mean, there's something that like you don't like about it and you try to work yeah. on it um i mean say for some trans men um they they may not do top surgery and mm -hmm. instead they would like um use bodybuilding right as right. i a friend yeah. mentioned to you like silver yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i'm gonna be thinking yeah. Right? yeah 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 and and to transform their body in the way that they they would uh they would be more uh aligned with their self-image so it's, right. it's more about it's very individual and yeah, yeah, and then different ways to do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, I think your idea of confidence too is you've got to find it in yourself personally, um, what it means to you to feel good in your body, right? Because it means there is not one way to do it. Um, so in this limited time left, I mean, the time and there's so much stuff I want to ask you, but uh, <laughs> so you created this uh, this this gender empowerment organization, right? To to provide this type of like. Uh, professional and peer support for people who are um, struggling with um, uh, their gender issues, specifically with trans people, correct? In Hong Kong. Yes. Yeah. So what would you say, like if you had to talk to anybody who's struggling out there um, with social pressures, uh, with family pressures, with, um, you know, individual personal issues, uh, what are just some short ways in one short minute that you could maybe give to people? Yes, love yourself. Um, you have to really take care of yourself. Because um, like quite a number of like trans people that we encounter that they are kind of like more suppressive. Yeah. Um, they always put other things like in, like before them, like the families, the parents, um, or their mar marital families, and or like the, the, the workplace and so, so like um, kind of like pressure. Yeah. Um, so I, we would tell them to love themselves. And, but also that they have to um, just carry the people around them to go into the journey with them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we also provide support to um, the families, like yeah. the parents. Um, because like people who like, even they may appear to like say oppose you, they may like, it's out of their intention of like caring for you. Mm. So um, try to like um, start the conversation um and i've because i've benefited like a lot from the con from the conversation with like lots of my friends my family etc yeah, yeah. and that's how i could like really articulate um well of like yeah like who i am um and also with that kind of like support behind you it's easier for you to to um to undergo like to go through your transition 
and be who you are. I mean, I think you're ready. Being a trans, wanting to be um, as your identified like man or woman is yeah. not just a man or yeah. woman, but also yeah. um, it it influences everything. Life. Yeah, it's a whole lifestyle. Yeah. So I think That's you're right. on it. So we need to converse. And thank you for giving us that tip because I know it's hard for some people, but we really um, hope we can have these conversations and move it forward. Unfortunately, we're out of time, but I um, really, really appreciate what you're sharing. This is Kes Rowan chiming in from Hong Kong and uh, best of luck with all the empowerment you are creating. Thank you. Thank you, Christophe.